Coming up on H-Town High School Sports, we're hitting it hard with another big week in the district baseball races. We'll have the fantastic finishes. In softball, it's a huge week of district play. We'll have that action. In soccer, it's history in the making for these Patriots from Goose Creek Memorial. It's never been done here in school, and being a part of it's amazing. We'll have the story. Well, it's an amazing story for not one, but two soccer teams from Seven Lakes. So get set to dive on in. H-Town High School Sports starts now. The excitement, the emotion, the passion. Big highlights, inspirational stories, unrivaled coverage. Rise up, Houston. This is H Town High School Sports. Here's your host, Todd Freed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to H Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed. Let's start things up with a huge week in softball, where the defending Class 6A state champion Pearland Oilers were looking to move one big win closer to an undefeated district championship. The 27-2 Oilers faced the rival and second place Dawson Eagles in a key District 23-6A matchup. Defending state champ Pearland and the Dawson Eagles all set to go. Top of the first for Pearland. Kelsey Martin at bat, base hit to center field. Kelly Scheiser scores. It's one to nothing Oilers. Dawson pitcher Kara Pittman with some smoke right there. The strikeout to end the threat. Bottom two for Dawson. Laney Luna lines it to right. Over the right fielder. Carissa Anaya scores two to one. The game then got suspended by rain, so then two days later, under sunshiny skies, they resume. Still in the second inning, Peyton Travis for Dawson. Runners on base, base hit to right. Katie Hollier comes in, and the game is tied at two. Bottom of the fourth inning now, Eagles at bat. Laney Luna reps it way back to left center field. Carissa Anaya will come in, and it's 3-2, Dawson on top. Eagles now, runner at third, one out. Peyton Travis, a shot, but Kaylee Mansif snares it, and the double play. Last chance for Pearland, but the ground out to third. This will end the game, and a big 3-2 victory for Dawson. Eagles now 8-2 in district, one back of Pearland. Entering the second to last week of the regular season, first place in the District 21-6A race belonged to the Kingwood Mustangs. But just one game behind in the standings stood the Summer Creek Bulldogs. So loads at stake when the two teams faced off earlier this week. Summer Creek Bulldogs fired up and Kingwood ready to go as well. Kingwood pitcher Hunter Quinto was really ready. She gets the strikeout looking in the first inning. In the second, more of the same from Hunter. This time, the smoke. Bottom three for Kingwood. Ava Jolly, nice bunt. Addie Shepard scores. Throw to first is dropped. Leilani Garcia gets in for the run. Three to nothing, Kingwood. Meantime, Hunter Quintel was in command. Another strikeout. Bottom of the six, Kingwood blows it wide open. Leilani Garcia drives it into the gap in left center. Abela Mata and Addie Shepard come in, and it's seven to nothing, Kingwood. Same at bat. Ava Jolly connects to center, and this one, it falls. Leilani Garcia and Mia Gagliardi score, nine nothing. Then, on the wild pitch, Ava Jolly will score, and it's jolly good times for Kingwood. Game over by the 10-run rule. 10-0 the final, a no-hitter for Hunter Quinto. Mustangs 24-7 and 12-0 and in district. Nice crowd on hand for our first place matchup between Galena Park and Waltrip. 
19-5A. Bottom two for Waltrip, Anaya Ortega. Base hit to right field. Savannah Gonzalez and Eris Aiken score. It's two to nothing Rams. Galena Park pitcher Kristen Bernstein buckled down from there. The strikeout to end the thread. Top of the third, Galena Parks. Victoria Miranda, long fly to left field, but Holly Chavez makes a nice running catch for the Rams. Top of the fourth, Johanna Hernandez connects to right field. Mariah De Santiago will come in, and that ties the game at two. Yellow Jackets add to the lead. Kaylin Fountain, long fly to left. The catch will be made out there, but Johanna Hernandez tags and scores. Top of the fifth now. Johanna Hernandez at bat. Base hit to center. Mia Garcia scores. It's 7-2 Galena Park. Then Johanna Hernandez. Base hit to left. Haley Hernandez and Victoria Miranda score. 12-2 the final. Galena Park now 9-0 in district. All right, let's switch gears to baseball where it's always a great battle for supremacy in the District 24-6A race. The front runner entering the week was the Clear Creek Wildcats, but right in the thick of the district title chase was the nearby rival Clear Springs Chargers. And this, our Fred Haas Auto Group Game of the Week. Let's head out to Clear Springs for the huge district matchup. Top of the first for Clear Creek. Runners on the corners. The delayed steal. The throw to second is high. And so Asa Sampson comes in. He scores. It's two to nothing. Clear Creek. Creek pitcher Tyler Austin was tough. The strikeout in the second. Clear Springs pitcher Tyler Ryden. Great outing. Strikeout to end the third. Bottom three, Springs, Drew Floyd, hot liner to short. That'll score Parker Klingman, and it's two to one. Top of the fifth inning now, Tyler Ryden on the mound. Another strikeout. It was tied at two after five. Bottom of the six, Clear Springs has two runners on. Luke Teresa connects deep to center field. Will Rogers, great diving catch, and that saves two runs. Still tied at two. Bottom seven, Springs runner at third, but reliever Ian Alper, the submarine strikeout. We go to extra innings tied at two. Bottom eight now, Clear Springs, Austin Ware on first base. He'll steal second. The throw is high, so Ware will get to third, and that was huge. Next batter, Andrew Fonte steps up, and Fonte lines it way back to center field. Ware will tag, and he will score easily with the game-winning run. And Clear Springs celebrates. They win a thriller, 3-2 the final. Your Fred Hess Auto Group Game of the Week. Fans and Friendswood on hand. Big game between Friendswood Laporte, District 18-5A. Top of the third for Laporte, Adrian Delgadillo, base hit. Thomas Ponton scores, one to nothing Bulldogs. Bottom three, Friendswood, Kyle Lockhart connects deep to right. The catch is not made. Dane Perry comes in, game tied at one. Bottom four now, Lane Vegas. Viva Lane Vegas, base hit to right. Matt Lara comes in, it's two to one Friendswood. Top of the fifth for Laporte, runner on third. Pitch home gets away, Thomas Ponton Dives in there, game tied at two. Then, Adrian Delgadillo. He lines the center. Caleb Hill on third will tag and score. It's three to two, Laporte on top. Top of the six, Caleb Hill at bat. A blast to right, and that one is back, back, back. And it's gone, four to Laporte. Bottom seven, last chance for Franswood. Kyle Lockhart steps up, pop foul, left side, right next to the dugout. Aiden Sines makes a catch, and that ends it. Big win for Laporte, 4-2 the final. Elsewhere in Missouri City Friday night, the Elkins Knights and Travis Tigers faced off as the two teams look to remain in the thick of the District 26A playoff chase. 
Braylon Payne. There's Elkins star outfielder Braylon Payne set to go. Travis Tigers were really set early and often. Top of the first, two runners on. Jaden Blalack with a blast to left, and it's gone. Three run homer for Travis. It's three to nothing. Same at bat. Tigers have two on again, and this time Oscar Diaz with a shot off the foul pole. Second three run homer of the inning. Six nothing. Bottom one, Knights Braylon Payne. A monster shot. Dead center field over the gray monster. It's six to one. Bottom two. Now Payne is on second base. He heads the third on the steal. Throw gets away and Payne will score. That cut the lead to six to two. He dives in there. Tigers come right back. Top of the third. Red Kudelka lines it to right, and that's a, another home run for the Tigers. 7-3, Travis on top. Top of the fourth. More Travis. This time, Blalak, a shot. Way back. This one is off the wall. Brandon Ray will come in and score, and Travis wins a big one. They go to 18-9 and 7-5 and and in district. Up ahead, it's the state final four in soccer for not one, but two teams from seven legs. While it's the first ever birth to state for these Patriots from Goose Creek Memorial, we'll have a special report. And also ahead, it's the need for speed as we talk track and field with Vite Media's Matt Malatesta. Welcome back to H Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed. As we highlighted on last week's show, it was a double dose of Region 3 soccer championships for Seven Lakes last weekend in Deer Park, with both the Spartans boys and girls capturing regional titles. Remarkably, not one, but two Seven Lakes teams advancing to the 6A state soccer tournament. With a pair of teams embarking to the Class 6A state soccer tournament, it was an extra special send-off for the Seven Lakes Spartans soccer teams. For the defending state champion Seven Lakes boys, it's the second straight trip to state, while the girls head to the state final four for the first time since 2012. It's the boys and girls going to state together. How exciting is that? It's, I just can't believe it's happening. I feel like this is just history in the making and I'm really just ecstatic about it. It's a super special feeling uh, for me, especially it's my senior year, but also for everyone else. Uh, I'm so proud of how far we've come from the very first game, very first scrimmage we played to even our most recent one against Jordan. Well, it's always special to go to state um, and definitely in a program with this this history um, and just really proud of this group to to not only set that standard, but live up to it and just really proud of them. It's just, it's really special, man. We're all super excited and we're, we have the main goal in mind, just go there and do it again. What about having the girls join you with two Seven Lakes teams going to state? Oh, uh, this brings a lot of fun. You know, I'm really, I'm really happy Seven Lakes can really succeed in the soccer world. And I'm just glad they're both coming. You know, I hope they can win too, but I hope we can win as well. And so, as for the defending state champion Seven Lakes boys, the Spartans return to state to face Duncanville in Friday's 6A state semifinals. Out to Burkleback Field in Georgetown for the 6A state semifinal. First half, Duncanville on the attack. The laser shot, but Ben Aviles Veta with a great diving deflection to save the goal. Wow. Later in the half, Ben Aviles Veta with one great save after another for seven legs. It was scoreless at half. Early second half. No score. Spartans on the attack. Aiden Morrison to Noah Stasek. The blast and the goal. 20 yards out. one nothing. Seven legs. Later in the half, more seven legs. Eduardo Davalillo will take the shot right there. And the goal. 2 nothing. Spartans on the replay. The great assist from Daniel Ejirinwa. And then the goal. And Seven Lakes wins 2-0 over Duncanville to advance back to the state final to face Louisville Flower Mound. We'll have a follow-up on that match on next week's show. 
Now in Class 5A, the Goose Creek Memorial Patriots advanced the state for the first time ever with last week's win over Magnolia West in the Region 3 Finals. More now on a historic season for Goose Creek Memorial. As Goose Creek Memorial returned to practice this week, the Patriots did so in preparation for the team's first ever berth to the state soccer tournament. It's emotional, something, you know, it's never done. It's never been done here in school and being a part of it's amazing. It feels very good. I think these past four years, us the seniors, we've only have, we only have a couple this year, but uh, I know this year we were a little worried that we weren't gonna make it that far, but I know as a group, we have the passion, the hard work, and obviously we've, we've, we've made it happen. It's amazing, um, you know, just the community itself, the, the school that's been behind us this whole time. Uh, third time's a charm, I guess, you know, been there three times. Uh, the first two times, uh, we actually made it to the finals the first time. The third time proved to be the charm with a thrilling 2-1 to one overtime win over Magnolia West in the regional final. The go-ahead score coming from senior standout Carlos Gonzalez, who's knocked in a remarkable 45 goals in 26 games this season. It's one of the goals I had, uh, my main goal was to get average three goals a game. You know, I feel like setting high standards for yourself is what makes you play better. For his career, Gonzalez has scored 105 goals here at Goose Creek. He's a key member of this program, just building the culture, and obviously the stats speak for themselves. Um, he's, a, he's a big player that shows up, big moments. Loads of big moments for a Goose Creek team, which is undefeated over the course of its last 20 games, which includes 18 victories and a pair of ties. Started this year with the mentality, started strong. You know, since August, cross country season, we all had the same mentality. Even since last year, it was it was heartbreaking losing third round because, you know, we had the potential for it. But we we lost and we just grew together. We support each other no matter what, on and off the field. Um, I think team bonding was one of the keys. You know, um, we'll go outside of Saturday practice, we'll go hang out. Um, but yeah, team bonding, building chemistry on and off the field was the thing that mainly led us to success this year. And the Patriots have also been quite resilient when it's counted most. Rallying from second half deficits in playoff wins over Galena Park and ultimately Magnolia West in the regional final. That's just the character that they are. Uh, you know, this team bonded together, just, just started putting in the work in August and everything's kind of come together. Being down at the half to Galena Park and then, um, you know, being down in the finals and just somehow figuring out a way to come back and win it. Welcome back to H Town High School Sports as we welcome back Vite Media's Matt Malatesta. This week, Matt, it's the need for speed. The big regional meets are coming up. We got amazing national big time athletes. Let's talk about the boys first off. I was there, four by 100, a task to see this. It's a national record in that event. I don't remember, do you remember Matthew Bowling at Strict Jesuit and yes. all the freaking momentum and the vibe around him? Atascacita's got that momentum right now. They're amazing. Their relay teams are going to just pack the points in at the state meet. But it's all led by Jelani Watkins. Jelani Watkins is a super talent. He's won the 200 two times in a row as, as a state champ. Other boys, Mason Dossett, number one 110 hurdler in the nation. I mean, this, point. this guy can get it. Another football guy. But what I love to see these football guys translating to the track in Mason Dawson, special talent. That's a very, very hard race. But another guy that's just breaking the internet, Carson Gordon from Episcopal. SBC. A, SBC sets a national record in the triple jump. He's going to play football at UCLA, but really he's honed his craft and he is one of the best in the country. All right, let's talk girls now. And first of all, we talk about relays. Klein Force, Number two in the nation, four by 100. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a Klein Forest grad. Oh no. I'm not saying I was really great at track, but they are really great. This is their year. They were close last year. This is year, their year to win state. It's all kind of coming together for them. Summer Creek though is really good at track. Also, they've got some really talented relays. Watch out for them. And then another individual phenom, Lillian Harden of uh, Bridgeland, 100 hurdles. Again, such a tough race, and she makes it look really, really easy. I'm so happy for her. Bailey Miner at FBCA in TAPS, another great, great 
girls track athlete, and she's going to lead their team to another state championship as well. Oh, you predicted right here. Done. All right. Uh, we can go on and on because we have amazing track and field athletes here in Greater Houston. Bright Media's Matt Malatesta, thanks for joining us. Good seeing you. All right. Welcome back to H Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed, where as always, we close it out in electrifying fashion with our Rhythm Energy Electrifying Plays of the Week. Kingwood freshman pitcher Hunter Quintel was outstanding against Summer Creek. She fires a six inning no hitter in the 10 to nothing Mustangs win. Clear Springs and Clear Creek, two on for Springs. Game tied, Luke Teresa, a blast, but Will Rogers, great diving catch to save two runs. Same game, bottom eight, Andrew Fonte with the sack liner. Austin Ware will tag and score the game-winning run for Clear Springs. Travis against Elkins. First inning, Travis Tigers have two on, and Jaden Blalack with a shot. This, a three-run homer. Same at bat. Travis has two on again, and Oscar Diaz connects. Two three-run homers in the same at-bat in the Travis win. Soccer, state semifinals, Seven Lakes goalkeeper Ben Avilis Veda was spectacular. A pair of great saves. Second half for Seven Lakes, Daniel Ejerwenwa to Eduardo Davalio. The goal, Seven Lakes wins to advance back to the state finals. Your Rhythm Energy Electrifying Plays of the Week. All right, electrifying as always. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Todd Freed. Until next time, stay H-Town proud.